May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be to the greater honor and glory of God. Amen. So in the midst of uh, 2020 and the pandemic, and um, I spent a lot of time on YouTube uh, learning about how to live stream, and, uh, and then I kind of got hooked on fishing videos. <laughs> And there are two or three or so <laughs> that I watch on a regular basis. And one of them is a uh, pro professional uh, bass fisherman. And he goes around to these different tournaments. And he's got a couple other friends who you know, he, he does these YouTube uh, videos with. And uh, recently, um, he was getting ready for a tournament. They give you uh, a couple days to practice on the lake or the river or wherever you're fishing before the tournament uh, starts. So this particular video that I was watching was a practice video, or you know, he was practicing for the tournament. And so you know, he's got these little GoPro cameras and he's got a little GoPro on his chest and so on. And uh, so it's, it's the scene is showing him in the front of the boat. And he's sitting there, he's got a fishing rod in one hand and his cell phone in the other. And all of a sudden, as he's typing away, he just his, his fumbles his phone and it goes in the water. And he just immediately drops his pole and jumps out of the boat into the water. And then you can just see it's about 45 seconds later, he comes up, you know, sputtering, got his phone in his hand, and then he tosses it into the boat and then gets back into the boat. Well, later, later on in the video, he's, he's telling his two friends, his two fishing buddies, about you know, this event, and, uh, and, and you know, the, the pump was kind of going like this in the water, and, and, uh, and you know, it was all he could do to, to grab it and get a hold of it. And he says, hey, he says my, life, my whole life is wrapped up in that phone. I just could not bear to lose that phone. And then I read today's gospel story, and I thought, you know, how many of us could say the same thing, that our lives are wrapped up in our homes, that we, we all have our contacts and, and everything is wrapped up in that home. And then it dawned on me that what if we were that connected to Jesus Christ as we are to our homes, that, that we could say, my whole life is wrapped up in Jesus Christ, is connected to Jesus Christ, like our phones are connected to us. So we have this gospel reading today. It's a you know, famous gospel reading of uh, Jesus has been ministering to the crowds, and, uh, and then he dismisses the crowds, and he tells the disciples to go across uh, the Galilee in, in a boat, and Jesus goes, and then go with him, he goes up on the mountain to pray. And uh, the, the wind comes up, and, uh, and it's you know, really stormy. It's just a terrible storm, and they're just battling for their life to, uh, to stay afloat and, and keep the water out. And then in the midst of this raging storm, they see this phenomenon walking on the water towards them and of course they're terrified and they think it's a ghost well so and jesus says you know don't don't it's i don't you know chill out don't be afraid and then peter he gets brave peter always gets brave and then that's when things go wrong so he says, Lord, if it's you, command me to come out of the boat and walk on the water out towards you. So Jesus says, yeah, come on, let's give it a try. Yeah. So Jesus turns to the disciples and says, oh, my dear. Hey, you all watch this. So he gets out of the boat and with great confidence, because Jesus has commanded him, he starts walking on the water. And then he takes his eyes off of Jesus. And he says, the storms and the waves and the wind. And then he starts to sink, just like the phone. And he says, Lord, save me. And so Jesus reaches down. 
down, grabs him by the hand, pulls him back up again, and they get into the boat, and then the, 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 the storm calms down. And then Jesus says, oh, you of little faith. Now, Peter is always one to take a big risk, and then he's always one to, you know, mess that up. And so, this is not necessary. I don't see this as an indictment of Peter. Yes, it is. But these stories are not written just for them. They're written for us. So what is it in, in us? Julie, it's, it's not an indictment of Peter as much as it's, as it's about us in our human nature. Our human nature to have fear and doubt in our life especially in the midst of the storms of life. We always have experienced that. If you have it, just hang on. They're going to come. Julian of Norwich, she writes of Jesus, Christ revealed our frailty and our calling, our trespasses and our humiliations. How many times has Jesus, you know, got on Peter, and then there's this, uh, James and John, who want to be, sit on either side of him, and he says, you're, you're not worthy to sit there, please. So, but Peter got out of the boat. He took a risk. He stepped out in faith. And I see this as, as a story of our personal life, but also of the life of a church as well, and of a congregation. That think about uh, the times in your life when you started something new, or starting a new adventure or a new project, and everything's going great, and then you get adversity, and you get troubles, and then you start to have that sense of self-doubt. What have I gotten myself into? Now, whether or not you succeed or you fail will depend a lot on how you get through that. That we're all going to be in that valley of the shadow of death at some point in our life, or that dark valley in our life. We get through it if we have that personal connection with Jesus Christ. Today we start with the story of Joseph and his travails, and God comes to him in a big way in these dreams and and the problem with Joseph, he's like Peter, and that he can't keep his mouth shut. But he tells his brothers that, oh, I had this dream that, it, and there are a couple dreams, and he says that God is eventually going to make me master over, over you. Well, you know, how do you think Hadley would think if Savannah all of a sudden said, yeah, God gave me a dream that I'm going to be master over you? You wouldn't appreciate that, would you? Just like, you know, I didn't appreciate being lorded over by my brothers and sisters, but that's another story. <laughs> but Joseph, he has, it's, it's almost, they call it the Joseph Novel, and it's a little novel uh, within the book of Genesis. But all of his travails and all the times that, you know, yeah, God's with him, but, you know, he ends up being thrown and he goes to into Egypt, he gets, he thinks he's on the right path, and uh, Potiphar's wife gets him in trouble, and he ends up, you know, in prison. And then he's doing well in prison, and then he gets forgotten about in prison. But eventually, God uses him as an instrument, that he keeps his faith throughout all of this. He keeps his connection with God, and then because God has a purpose for him and what he's doing. On my own personal level, I think about the times that uh, when Lydia decided to take, get out of the boat uh, and, and go to nursing school. And for two or three years, we lived on one income. And there were all kinds of adversities and challenges with that. And then no sooner did she get done with her college than I headed off for seminary. And I was you know, without an income for you know, that double income for five, almost five years. And there were so many times where I thought, man, what have I gotten myself into? 
I remember <laughs> in Simpson, I did pretty well. You know, I was scared to death to go back to school as an adult. But I, and I did pretty well uh, in to get my bachelor's degree because I only had an associate degree. But I remember in seminary, the very first class, the very first paper I wrote, and the very first grade was an F. <laughs> and I thought, dear Lord. But the problem was that I knew better than the professor. And so he, uh, he gives us these very specific instructions on how to write this paper. And I thought, well, I'm, I'm going to write my way. So he gives me an F. So I go and I beg him and I say, please, can I write, rewrite this paper? And he says, yeah, you're going to write it my way. So I did it his way and then got an A. And so it kind of taught me, you know, do what the professors want and not what you think is right. Do what God wants and not what you think is right is, the, is kind of the connection there. But it's that trusting in God and waiting on God. There was a group of people in 1855 that got out of the boat, jumped out of the boat and said, I, we want to form an Episcopal church here in Mount Vernon, Indiana. And so they took that great risk. And then eventually there was a group of people that jumped out of the boat and said, we're going to build a church on this particular spot in Mount Vernon. And if you go through the history of this church, there has been all kinds of storms and waves that have battered this church and this congregation. And yet it has continued to have faith in God and thrive in the midst of that. Back in 2018, we jumped out of the boat and had a capital campaign and said, what is God calling us to do? And Jesus says, where two or three are gathered, I am with you. And I will, you know, through the Holy Spirit, help you make decisions. And we decided as a congregation to buy the house next door. And everything, you know, we didn't know what we were getting in our, ourselves into, but boy, we get ourselves into something terrible, you know. And then we have pictures to prove how bad it was. But yet we've had in, in uh, recent weeks and so everybody who's walked in that house now is astounded at, at how it looks and what we've done to that house and how beautiful it is in its own way. But we've had adversity through the ownership of that house and we're sitting in adversity now of not of having to figure out what God wants us to do with this house next door. The, 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 the breadth of the sermon is that there are times when God wants us to wait upon him, wait for him to give us the instructions and to guide us forward in our personal life and as a congregation. And then there are times when God says, jump out of the boat. And when God says, jump out of the boat, we need to do it immediately and have faith and hope that 